The A's was an obvious one um, because we just looked and saw it was naught, 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 one. Um, and it was my capsule. I was hungry when I left the train. I entered a chrome cafeteria. I knew it was one of a chain. So it was just pre big psychedelia and Sergeant Pepper in 68 and all of that ran a folk club in Inverness Place in Bayswater, the Holy Ground, traditional Irish music. People like the Dubliners used to drop in. And then I was booking people like the Incredible String Band for eight pounds, and everybody on the scene. Bowdered eggs come and sell a fine packets, but I must say I let out a mouth. Things slowly became more and more freak flag flying. <laughs> Moved away from beer and into all the other delights of that summer of love. I was quite stoned a lot of the time because it was a kind of vague time. I had friends who were a band called Gasworks and I used to hang out there flat in West Kensington and the radio would be on a lot of the time and they would be talking about John Peel and saying, John Peel played this and John Peel played that. It was like a musical maypole with everybody swinging around him. It was kind of the man who put the good music out. I considered my music to be good. <laughs> and he put me out. Now listen, a terrible story I'll tell you will fill you with horror as you lie in your bunk. It was recorded in Streatham, in my sister's front room, on Bob Hall's uh, tape recorder. He was a boogie pianist. And I made it with Diz Disley. And we basically just sang into this little old tape recorder and he played along with me. And it turned out to be quite good. It was evening. A chill winter's wind. And so I moved up from the folk clubs, started doing the college circuit. And we had explosions, and I used to tap dance in a tutu in black tights, uh, playing the violin and spewing blood capsules out of my mouth. Very hard work, lots of traveling, not much sleep, lots of girls, lots of... Uh, long cigarettes. As it was, it seemed quite normal. But of course, when you walked out into the streets in Earl's Court, a little more than stoned, and saw paisley prints appearing in diamonds coming out of the tarmac, uh, it's something you do remember. Uh, welcome from Whistletest to Mike Absalom. Hector the dope sniffing hound Used to be seen around town With inspectors and pigs He was one of the bigs A bark from that knock sent you down One night they were casing a joint On point duty Hector did point At the small herbal fag Then he took a sly drag Saying bow wow Wow I had good big gigs for 10 years after that. I remember sitting in, in a burger bar in Earl's Court, having my burger, and this huge hell's angel clanked up to me, kind of jingling spurs and everything. And I thought, oh my God, what's this? There I was sitting with my freak flag and little hippie me. And he said, I saw you on telly last night. Gray, Hector the dope sniffing hell. My first fan. Hector the dope sniffing. I remember a gig I did with John Peel. I think it was Lewis. Lewis Technical College or Polytech. About 1973, 74. It was a terrible gig. It was my worst gig ever. So we got there pretty late, pretty worn out. And John Peel was the DJ. I remember him up in his little box, you know, over the dance floor. And I did my my spot. But my manager had decided that I had to be a kind of new Leo Sayer. 
That wasn't my style at all. I was a satirist. And he dressed me up in these frilly shirts and I had amazing makeup on. I think the show was Drugula. And he made me stand instead of sit. So I was standing there with my old J200 trying to get through the show. And somebody came out behind me and I couldn't see the person behind me and started jumping around and doing silly walks. And I finished the show and I got very, very angry. Uh, in those days, I was young, I got angry. And I tried to kill the guy with a mic stand. I chased him all over the hall and behind the backdrops. And finally, was about to smash his head in. I'm glad I didn't. All the roadies jumped on me and the manager and his boyfriend and pinned me down, and shoved a pipe between my lips, a, a peace pipe, I suppose. And the next day, they took me off and had me initiated into transcendental meditation to kind of try and calm me down which was a big mistake for the music scene because I got deeper and deeper and deeper into meditation. In the end, I gave up music in England and emigrated to Canada, married a meditation teacher. So it was a seminal gig, that one with John Peel. I've been a painter on the bog in Ireland for the last 10 years and quite successful and writing a lot of poetry. And I've got a book coming out this year uh, called Old Fart which has a lot of poems about those days. And I'm making a little comeback. I suddenly discovered I have countless fans. And they're always asking for Hector and WBC Stick. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll just get my guitar out again and brush up on those. Now among the butterflies and flies, he flies, closing his eyes. Lady birds and beetles passing him by. Lazy days, summer ways, skies, cornflower blue. Hector defector, frolicking in the dew. Hector the dope-sniffing hound used to be seen around town.